Hi and welcome back to our tutorial series for our Rhino plugin Morpho. Today in session 9, visualizing results. I'm your host Benjamin and today we're going to complete the tutorial series. In today's session we are loading our simulation files into Grasshopper, then we're going to visualize them and finally exporting a final result from Rhino. So last time we conducted our simulation, so we um, put in all our simulation parameters and then run the simulation. And now after a few hours or days, uh, depending on your model, we got some results. And they landed here in our uh, workspace folder under the output folder. And here we can see it generated all the output uh, data we, we wanted it to. And in all of those folders uh, are stored ETT and EDX files. Those are the environment files that contain all the yeah, simulation results. And each, um, each folder contains a variety of uh, multiple um, parameters we can look at. Uh, yeah, and I'm going to show you that in a second. So now for uh, visualizing. We're going to go here and then we first uh, need our output folder. I'm getting this here and then I just need to copy the path of our folder and paste it here. So the plugin knows where the um, where our files are located. And then we are now we're gonna look at the atmosphere folder. So because we may just want to look at the air temperature. So I'm just gonna connect the panel here, connect the atmosphere folder, and now we see all the, the output data. So these are all the simulated hours. So we simulated for 24 hours, so we have values from 0 to 23. And here at the end, you can always see the, the, the time. And now to choose one of those hours, uh, again, I'm going to use the list item module, connect the list here. Then as an index, you input the, the index here. So basically the hour. Uh, I like to just add a number. Slider. And let's call it hour. Then just enter values from 0 to 23 to match the, the index of this list. And of course, now it's not our 0, so you have to uh, keep that in mind if you, uh, if you select our 10. It's not going to be 10 in the morning, but it's going to be the 10th uh, simulated hour of the simulation. So in our case, should be yeah 4 p.m. because we started at uh, 6 a.m. Right, and now we can um, yeah export or uh, output uh, the the item, and now we can yeah choose. Um, what exactly we are going to look at. So for that, I'm going to go here and for the atmosphere folder, we're just going to use Morpho read grid slice. That's what you usually use. You can also um, look at buildings or vegetation. But here, this is uh, quite useful for most uh, variables. And here we can just enter the item here in the EDT. So this is what we need one of the EDT files. And now the next thing would be the variable. So what I mentioned earlier, uh, these files contain multiple variables we can look at. And which those are, we can uh, see here if we connect this. So it's about, yeah, it's 38, uh, no, sorry, it's 37 um, variables. For example, the flow, wind flow, wind speed, temperature, and so on. And this is the basically basically the list we can choose from. And what I also like to do here is create a 
um, sorry, a value list uh, because it's uh, easier to choose from. Um, you know, another way is just to uh, also again enter index here, so zero to uh, one to uh, thirty-seven, and then yeah, put uh, put it here. I'm just uh, quickly going to create this uh, value list with all our variables. So now I have uh, this great value list where I can easily choose from. Just to show you real quick. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Um, this is what it looks like. So just um, enter the indexes here. And now we can connect this and then, yeah, just for this example, look at potential air temperature. Now we can choose which direction we want to look at. So uh, which plane, the x, uh, the x, y, or z plane. And for this also a quick uh, value list. It's quite uh, convenient. So I'm just going to enter x equals zero, y equals one, z equals two. Can also look it up here, and now it's uh, much easier to choose which direction we want to uh, look at. Now the index is basically the which of the slices we want to look at. So if the direction we slice in uh, uh, in one of the three directions, we look at one slice, and here we in the index we can enter which slice we want to look at. So for the it's an easy example for the for the set plane. The index just would be the height, uh, so what height we are looking at. So for this, um, I'm also do a, doing a number slider, and for simplicity's sake, just call it height. And here uh, doesn't really matter, but just gonna do zero to one hundred, even though. Our cells don't really necessarily go to 100, but then we can easily uh, change the height here. Uh, then for min and max, um, here you enter the expected, basically the, the values you want to look at. And at first I just would enter the uh, expected values you might uh, gonna see. So for temperature, I'm just gonna maybe do 15, Degrees Celsius for the min, and maybe 35 for max. Then we can, of course, change that later. And then for the base point, uh, we again need uh, the geometry, uh, which we also um, entered for the for our grid. The base point is just a reference point, so the plugin knows where to actually put the, the visualizing results. So just uh, here you can um, connect the base point. So just select the point here, and then uh, set a geometry. And now we have all the input uh, data. And now with a Boolean toggle, we can run it. And now to actually put the visualizing results into Rhino, we need to convert the like convert the format back to a Rhino mesh or Rhino uh, prep. So um, here I'm gonna choose a mesh because this is gonna help us a bit easier to visualize uh, the results, and then enter the output face to be Rhino mesh. And now we see it doesn't work because I entered uh, set as a direction and height 37, but our model just goes to 25. So just uh, lower this, and then here we can already see the plane. So it's just visualizing the plane we're looking at. If we go for uh, x value, you can see here, we can just uh, cycle with a slider, cycle through our model, 
and choose um, yeah, the slide we want to, to look at. So let's keep the set direction. And now to actually enter, uh, also add the, the values that we simulated, we're going to use the Ladybug plugin because uh, it offers a lot of easy visualizing tools for, um, for climate, climate data. So we're going to look for the Ladybug spatial heat map because it's a nice way to, to visualize the results. I connect up the values, connect up the mesh, and then we can already see some pretty nice results. And as I mentioned, you can easily uh, easily change the input data here, so we can vary the height, and then already see the effects, different heights, or again with the with another viewing plane, we can look through here and see how the buildings. Um, affect the air temperature. Yeah, just gonna go back to set. Yeah, easy level so. And yeah, you can um, now filter here through the values you wanna look at. So for example, if uh, if you just wanna see, maybe take a different hour, tenth hour. Can go a bit earlier, and then, for example, you just you just want to look at values above twenty degrees. You can enter the minimal value, and then now it's uh, it's just showing you the values above twenty degrees. And of course, you can also limit the the maximum uh, values. Yeah, so this would already be it for a. Just a simple, just you know, to so you get the concept uh, of how to create, how to visualize the results, and just to finalize it, we're gonna, yeah, make a little nice map. So here we can um, get some titles, yeah, like a legend title. We're gonna do potential air temperature. In degree Celsius, and then as a global title, I like to to enter the, the date and uh, time. So just to easily look at it again, you can connect this up here, and then we see it's a twenty first, twenty first of August, twenty twenty four. At uh, fourteen o'clock, but you know you can enter whatever you like. But now we know uh, what date and time we are looking at. Yeah, and now for a export, we can go back into Rhino, and then. Choosing a top view because this is you know this is where the uh, our our legend and our data is now uh, projected to the top view is nice to look at maybe choose uh, rendered and then I like to do view capture to file this is a nice way to export uh, your results so again here you can. Uh, choose view with some uh, options, for example, also a transparent background, and then the resolution. You can set the highest resolution here, and then if you click on OK, you can uh, save to a file, and then you have a presentable uh, image for your simulation. So, this was it with our tutorial series. I'm again going to summarize what we learned today. So, showed you how to uh, yeah, select the right files and how to import them into the MOF, uh, yeah, into the MOF plugin. 
Then we entered and uh, changed the input parameters. I showed how to filter through uh, values so you can choose what to look at. And then finally, how to export the map from Rhino. I hope you enjoyed the series and I hope you, you learned something. If you're eager to learn even more about Rhino plugin, uh, stay tuned for our next series, which is going to discuss some more advanced features of the plugin. So until then, uh, stay safe and goodbye.